What's up YouTube? Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I am Shanika Lawrence and I'm coming to you with another video today. Hey, one of the things that I have decided to commit to with this channel is to just kind of share my entrepreneurship journey, share with you guys what I have been experiencing, what I have experienced ever since I started this journey. And you know, I just want to document and hopefully I'll be able to kind of bring on other people that I know that are entrepreneurs and we can just have these really real discussions about not just the good things or the great things that we see in entrepreneurship, but also the business fails. And um, I think that's really gonna be lovely. I can't wait to share that with you guys in the future. So today I just wanted to talk to you guys about one of my businesses because I currently have two businesses, kinda like three, but for the purpose of this video, I have two established businesses. The first one that I started was a real estate business. And um, we just been purchasing different properties in long term or short term, renting those properties out. I'm thinking about getting into flips. I've done wholesaling as well. I did that all last year. And so this year was just a little bit different for me. I just kind of wanted to start the buy and hold process so that I could really work on building generational wealth for my family. I just want to talk to you guys today about my short term rental side of the business. And that is through Airbnb. I not only use Airbnb, Airbnb, but I also use platforms like VRBO as well as Furnish Finder to put up my unit. I just want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I have encountered with Airbnb. I'm going to try to make it an organized list, but as I'm thinking about them, I'm just going to share them with you. With the Airbnb, I only have one property currently that I Airbnb and it is because I just wanted to see how this model works for us, if we like it, if we wanna continue in it, if we wanna get more properties to Airbnb, um, things like that. If you're really thinking about you know, getting an Airbnb or starting an Airbnb, there are a couple different ways that you can do that. You can get a property and you can Airbnb it out. You can also use the current property that you have. You can Airbnb that entire property out or you can Airbnb out a room or a portion of the house. You don't even have to do the entire house, but you can definitely do that. And then you can also arbitrage, which is use the um, homes or the units of other people, people that already own those homes. You can kind of go to those homeowners and ask if you're able to use that home as a rental for yourself and then you could Airbnb it out. Normally they are fine with it. Some people are not okay with that, but there are people that will allow you to do that. So that's another option. When you do um, decide that you want it, I would suggest that you use different software to kind of help you out. There's one software that uh, many use, it's called AirDNA, and it will help give you a little bit more insight of the surrounding areas, the best areas that you should start the Airbnb. If you do start in a certain area, which what kind of rates you can expect or what kind of occupancy that you can expect, things like that. And also you can do your own research. You can actually just look at the Airbnb app on your phone and just look up the surrounding Airbnbs in your area and see are those Airbnbs getting booked? Do they seem like they're going for the kind of rates that you're willing to put your property up for, different things like that. Know that you always have the choice of what you want to set your prices at. But a lot of times people are using what's called smart pricing that it kind of goes along with the market. What is the market doing? I've done that, I've done both. I've set my own rate and I also use smart pricing. And I find that if you have a good unit and if people need it and if it's in a place and a location that people are coming to, then you're probably gonna get booked either way, normally. And especially if it's a really nice unit with a lot of different amenities and a lot of different things that it offers, then they'll be you know, willing to pay the price that you set. I had a group of people who stayed here last week, actually, and they had this huge party. huge <laughs> they were like everywhere they were getting it and I was just like oh my gosh I was at work that night I, my ring kept going off I was like oh my gosh I'm getting these notifications these people are 
having a party. Not only that, the neighbors were calling. I didn't really know exactly what to do at the time. My husband was also busy at work, so I called Airbnb. I'm like, hey, there's somebody having a party in my house and I need you to do something about it. I've reached out to them. They, they're not responding. They're still partying and uh, we kind of got it resolved. Um, so when it comes to that, um, you also can cover yourself in your rules. You can always put some sort of contingency that says, hey, if you violate any of these house rules, at any given moment, you guys can be kicked out of the property or the unit. And as long as you have things like that that cover yourself, then you can take action in the way that you need to. So I know that people around here were caught calling the police. I mean, they were really loud. They're very obnoxious. I think the police got, got called. However, they never came. I think my husband got on the ring and was like, hey, the police is coming in. Everybody took off, everybody left. And then the girl responded. She was like, oh, it's over now. Cause I told her, I was like, hey, you either gotta leave right now or you're gonna pay, you know, $25 per person per my rules. So the biggest thing I would say is to just cover yourself in your rules. Like make sure that you have all kinds of contingencies all kinds of uh, specific things that you want to let your people know what they can and cannot do so that if they do violate that rule, then whatever course of action that you're going to take, they won't be surprised by that course of action. And then also, if you have to go through Airbnb, they will hold that based off of your rules. So some people actually have rental agreements. I have a rental agreement, but I only use that for people that are trying to stay longer than two weeks. If you're staying less than two weeks then i normally don't do a rental agreement but in your rental agreement normally you'll have those house rules laid out as well so it's just another form of protection if something really does happen if something extra bad happens and you you know have to take somebody to court or something like that those rental agreements will really cover you another example of that was a uh, pet so i actually do not allow pets anymore in my units, but I did at first because I was like, well, let's just see how this works. This is my first time. I want to give everybody the opportunity to come in and experience this, so let's do pets. And then I had a bad experience where someone just allowed their pet to do whatever they wanted on certain types of linen that they wanted. I ended up having to throw a whole lot of stuff out. It's really bad housekeeping as far as having pets. You know, everybody doesn't clean after their pets the same way. They don't take care of their pets the same way. Some people just let their pets do anything and I experienced a group of people that did just that. Um, again, just had to kind of go through Airbnb with that, but again, everything was upheld. Payments were made and things like that. However, I just realized that I didn't really want to do it. I would say that if you're not a pet person, then you may not want to deal with the pets, especially if you're doing like cleaning or anything like that, um, which I'll also talk about. But um, you know, for me, having those like issues that regarded pets was just like, ah, I can't do this. So total, I had like four different groups of guests that had pets and two of them were really good. One of them was really bad. The other one was just like right in the middle. So I just kind of realized that that's just not something that I would like to deal with. It's just all about what you want in your unit. Speaking of cleaning, cleaning is okay. If um, if you have one unit and you wanna do it yourself, then feel free to clean um, on your own basis. You get kinda get to keep the money that you are charging for your cleaning fee. It goes towards everything that you're gonna have to clean anyway. And because uh, we only have one unit at the moment, we have been cleaning ourselves. However, our lives have become very busy and we're realizing that we're not gonna really be able to do this for too much longer. So we are already in the process of getting a cleaner. Just remember that goes into your cleaning fee so that's okay somebody asked me the question recently like well should I long term or should I Airbnb and the answer is it really depends on how much work or how much involvement you are willing to put up front so normally with long-term rentals you're putting up a lot of work up front to get someone in once you get them in it's really just maintenance after that you don't really have to do much um, however with a short-term unit you're having these turnarounds weekly sometimes multiple times in a week so if you are cleaning you have to think about that if you're sending out messages you have to think about that restocking and things like that you have to think about all of that so those are things that you will have to do more often than if you do a long-term rental you know if you do have that time or you have that flexibility then okay short-term rental might be okay for you I will say that there's more potential to gain more income with a short-term rental because you're capped off at the long-term rental versus short-term rental rental where you can get, you know, you have the ability to get more money per month because you have different groups coming in on different days 
in parts of the week. I think that either one is cool. It's just kind of all about what you want. There is also a way to automate everything in your Airbnb. So actually you won't be as hands-on. So I say at first because you know it's your first property, you'll probably be more hands-on, but as you get, get deeper into even that first property and you start to acquire more properties for Airbnb, you'll start to automate things. So you'll actually get VAs to do the messaging for you, to do all your operations. You'll get someone else in there to do the cleaning. You might even get someone else in there to do the stocking and things like that. So you don't really have to worry about much. And I think that's the beauty of this business is that you know you start with a lot of hands-on but then as it gradually goes through and you gain more and more properties you're able to delegate all of those tasks to someone else yes you're paying more but that's a part of the process as you're growing your business you know it's just a part of the expense so um, I would definitely say that if you can and if you would love to be a part of that model go ahead and do Airbnb at this time, people are saying that the occupancy rates have started to go down. This is true. Um, they had been at, you know, normally 90 to 100, even 80 to 100 percent occupancy for most people. Now people are saying they're, you know, maybe 70, 60 percent occupied. And that's become one of the concerns in, within the Airbnb host community that the occupancy rate is going down. I would say that could be because of all of the economical turmoil that we have been experiencing lately. So people may not be, um, you know, more apt to go on trips and go, you know, pay for Airbnbs. I do think that it is a good economical option for most people. So it just depends. Um, but there are ways to combat that. If you are in a great location, if your unit is a themed unit, a unit that has, you know, its own personality, that has something about it that is unique, that stands out um, among the rest, then I think that you'll be fine, that you won't have these issues. You get booked on more holidays and things like that. I have been booked every weekend in, in November and the entire week of Thanksgiving, I was also booked. December is coming up and I'm almost 80% occupied for December. So it just really depends on, again, like the time of the year, the location, what's going on. Sometimes there are things going on. There's a, a national park that's not too far from where my unit is. And sometimes there are things going on at that park. And when things are happening, people are coming in. And so it just depends. I just believe, just like with everything else, just to have faith and, you know, just to do your best that you can. Really provide a great service for whoever is coming to your unit. Make sure that they feel the love, they feel the hospitality, they feel the cleanliness, you know, they feel comfort and all of those things when they come to your unit. And I think that's what really stands out about it. I have to kind of do another video about how to really make your unit stand out and pop because I think that we can really talk about that and I can actually show you some things that I have in my unit that I get a lot of compliments on that people always say they really love this about and I think that would really help just overall general hospitality really making sure that you are serving and that you're offering the best experience for people that come think about how you like to feel when you go to a hotel or to a resort how you like to feel when you're in the you know bathroom or when you're in the kitchen or when you're in the bedroom how do you like to best be served in those situations and just offer that you know to your um, to your customers and I think that they'll be happy and I think that you'll be happy in the end I just kind of gave you some things off the top of my head that I was thinking about and I hope that that was helpful to somebody thinking about some things that they would do I'll have a little bit more to kind of share with you guys because this is again this has been a journey this has been an experience and even when it comes to doing things on the side because this is what I do on the side I think that the beauty of it is you can really learn and grow into an area that can actually replace your nine to five. And that is my goal. I am working not only in this business, but again, I have a couple of others that I'm working in and just working towards so that I can replace my nine to five. I love my job. I love working at the hospital with other people. I love helping nurse them back to optimal health or at least the best health that they could possibly be in at the time. But I believe that there is another way that God is calling me to serve. And so, um, you know, hey, uh, we learn, we live and we learn, we experience, and it is 
is my encouragement to you to continue to grow, to continue to learn and experience life in a new way and try something different and just see how you do. You never know until you jump out and really make the decision to do something that's going to benefit your life. Again, not just your life, but your family's life. All right, guys, but I love you so much. If you have any other questions regarding Airbnb, please leave me a comment down below and let's talk about it. I hope you have an amazing evening. You guys be blessed and I see you very soon in the next video. Bye.